Star Command picked a fine time to send the new recruits. All right, you Junior Space Rangers, listen up. I'm David Gansel, and welcome to Armchair Imagineering. A while back, I told you about the pitches John Stutzman and I came up with for Nintendo Rides. Uh, John's books are still available in the link in the description, and you should check them out. They are adorable. I also mentioned that our pitch wasn't just for Nintendo Park, but for an Islands of Adventure style collection of all video game licenses. So here were some of the ideas I had for non-Nintendo video game attractions. First up, the most famous non-Nintendo video game character, Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm playing a classic Sonic game, I'm less interested in thoroughly exploring the world and more interested in speeding through the world as fast as possible. So while any Sonic attraction would need the aesthetics we love from the game, it would even more importantly need the speed. I don't say this about a lot of franchises, but a dark ride would not do justice to Sonic. Sonic needs a roller coaster. A well-themed roller coaster, definitely not just a Six Flags style, name it after the character, but only barely decorate the cue coaster, but definitely a thrilling coaster. It would need to be a launch coaster to blast you off at Sonic-type speeds, and of course it would need at least one loop-de-loop, and it would need Wild Mouse-style sharp turns to replicate the bouncing back and forth you do when you're playing Sonic. And of course it needs onboard music and a giant Robotnik animatronic at the end. That all goes without saying. Then there's the next most famous video game character, Pac-Man. And I'll be honest, it's really tough to think of a way to replicate the feeling of the original Pac-Man in a theme park attraction. Obviously it would have to be some sort of maze, but a haunt-style walkthrough maze doesn't seem right. I mean, ghosts popping out at you seems okay, but Halloween mazes aren't really mazes, they're just really well-decorated walkways, and the aesthetics of the original Pac-Man would not sustain that sort of experience. It would just be the cue of a more interesting attraction. The best idea I could think of is combining a maze with a bumper car experience. You drive your Pac-Mobile around maze corridors, driving over LED lights and sensors on the floor that indicate dots, and of course those dots include power pellets. As you navigate the corridor, you bump into the other riders, but if you got a power pellet recently, you get points for the bump. It's pack versus pack up in here. Also, a trackless frogger ride seems like a gimme. Just combine Luigi's Rollicking Roadsters with that one cannon scene from Rise of the Resistance, and you're just in little frogmobiles dodging traffic. I had some idea for smaller attractions as well. A non-ride attraction I want is a ropes course a la Redwood Creek Challenge Trail, themed after the original Pitfall. Obviously, you wouldn't really get eaten by crocodiles or stung by scorpions, but you'd get to swing on ropes, climb on ladders, and jump around stationary logs. Also, obviously, at least one of the food courts would feature restaurants themed after Burger Time and Tapper. But the big expensive video game attraction I want? Portal. That's right, step into the hallways of Aperture Science and volunteer to be their new test subject. The bulk of the Portal attraction will be along the lines of Forbidden Journey or Smuggler's Run, where you're in a moving vehicle, but the simulator screen is moving with you. There's two people per vehicle, each of them controlling one Portal gun, because I'm really bad at thinking about capacity when it comes to video game rides. But with the simulator, you do the kind of puzzles you do in Portal levels, and move through the portals as you do them. You just have to work really well with your co-pilot for portal placement. But once you get through the motion simulator parts, you move into a big physical room with a big animatronic GLaDOS and laser beams shooting everywhere. The trick here is that while the room is physical, the walls are all screens. So you and your co-pilot can shoot portals on the walls to guide the lasers and defeat GLaDOS once and for all. Then you exit the ride vehicle and exit into the bakery where there will be cake. And those are my pitches for non-Nintendo video game rides. Of course, we haven't even gotten to my pitches yet for entire parks based on certain point-and-click adventure game series, but we'll get to those later. In the meantime, what's your pitch for a video game-based ride? Let's discuss this in the comments, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off.